morning again. Um, this morning we're going to be talking about um, a messenger. So let's first talk about a um, what is a messenger that you know of? Who is a messenger? What is a messenger? Well, let's see. How about the mailman or the mail lady? They're messengers because they carry information and they bring it to your house or your mailbox or the post office where you get your mail. Who else is a messenger? Hmm. Well, sometimes uh, now with technology, um, things can be done by email um, so that you can get things that way. Um, today we're going to be talking about a messenger. Well, before we get to the messenger, we're going to talk about Hannah. Hannah was a, a wife, and she was not able to have children. And this made her very upset. And she cried to God and was asking, Lord, please, let me have a son. Well, her husband... Um, his name was Elkanah, and Elkanah went to the tabernacle, and he would go there every year and have a sacrifice. Um, so he'd go there every year. One year, Hannah decided to go along. Well, <clears throat> before I get too far, Hannah's name means God favored me with a child. Now, Hannah went with her husband, Elk Anna, and went to the tabernacle, and she prayed and prayed and prayed. Lord, I thought you had your, I thought you had your hands up and you were praying. Okay, well, all right. So earlier he had his hands up and he was praying. Anyways, so she prayed and prayed and she was praying for a son. Now there was another priest that was there that was listening to her and his name was Eli. Well, Eli saw her over there and he's like, eh, that lady okay? She's talking to herself, mumbling around and can't really hear what she's saying. Mm she all right? I'm not sure what's the matter with her. But then he found out that she was praying for a child. Well, <clears throat> she talked to her husband about this, and she talked to Eli. And Eli said um, to her that he, he blessed her, and, and uh, her and her husband went home. Well, it wasn't long that Hannah found out that she was with child. So, <clears throat> several months later, she gave birth to a boy. What she had prayed for. Now remember what her name means. Her name means, God favored me with a child. It's pretty exciting that your name means what you were praying for. So, Hannah had this child, and she named him, her and her husband named him, Samuel. So Samuel was, um, Samuel had a future um, because his mother said to God, if you give me a son, I will make sure that this son is dedicated and devoted to you. Well, years down the road, um, she went and, well, with, um, e um, sorry, not Eli, with Elk Anna, her husband, and um, Eli, not Eli, I'm so sorry, um, getting names mixed up, Samuel. Samuel went, and he went to the tabernacle, and he stayed there, and uh, 
His mother went home. Well, while he was there, he found out that Eli, the priest, and his sons were priests as well, but his sons were sinning. They were sinning against God. So, one night, Samuel was, it was bedtime. So Samuel was sleeping, and he was sleeping on the floor, and he heard the name Samuel, Samuel. And he woke up, and he went over to the priest, which was Eli, and said, Yes, what can I, uh, what, what do you want? What can I do for you? I didn't call your name. Oh, I'm sorry. So he went back to bed. And he was laying on the floor again, and had his eyes shut, and he was laying there, and Samuel, Samuel, he heard. Well, he woke up and went over to Eli and said, yes, um, you called? No, I didn't call your name. Oh, okay. So he went back, and he laid down again. And um, he heard his name again, Samuel. Samuel. And he woke up and said, You called? N no. No. It wasn't me, said Eli. Um, m maybe it's the Lord. So, Samuel went to bed and God called. And he said, Yes, I am here. What can what can I do? What do you what do you want to say to me? Well, God had a message, and He was using Samuel for that message. And He wanted what He wanted to say was that God was going to judge Eli and his family because his sons were sinning. They were priests and they were sinning. So the next morning. Samuel woke up, and Eli said, So, Samuel, um, what did God say? Well, Samuel said what God told him. Uh, and I'm sure Samuel felt bad, but he was the messenger. God gave him the words. God gave him the message, and he provided it to Eli. Now, Samuel continued to grow, grow up, and grow in the Lord. And Samuel um, was actually God's messenger. God's, God used Samuel to share his plan for Israel. So, that is the story for today. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go off script here, and what that means is, um, that is our lesson for today. But I, I just think we just need to apply it to our lives today. Well, last week we talked about, or what did we talk about? Um, last week we talked about fire. That's right, purple monkey. He liked to talk about fire, and so we did last week. So why did we talk about fire? Purple Monkey, why did we talk about fire? Oh, yes. Um, because with fire, in order to have fire, you have to have a triangle, right? So you have to have, a, you have, to have the heat, which was up top, then your oxygen, and your fuel, okay? And when you get those things together, it creates combustion or a chemical reaction. Well, there's another triangle that we talk about in the Bible, and that's the Trinity. So, a triangle has three sides, also has three angles or corners. So, in the Trinity... You have the Father, the Son, and the 
what was last Sunday? Last Sunday was Pentecost. What's so great about Pentecost? Well, that's whenever the Lord gave the Holy Spirit to us, that the Holy Spirit lives within us. So that is the three in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So that's whenever that happened. And how did that happen? There was tongues, tongues, that's kind of a funny way to say it, but kind of like a tongue of fire on top of their head. I'm not sure exactly what that looked like. I can't imagine it was a large flame, but it was a tongue of fire that lit on top of their heads. God had given them the Holy Spirit. So then they could speak in different languages and they could tell other people what God was saying. So remember back in the time of the... What was the building called that they were... They were building and they were going up and they were building this building so high. They were going up to the sky and they're building it up to what? Babel? Yeah, Babel. Tower of Babel. So they were building this Tower of Babel. And all of a sudden, God confused them. All the languages were created at that time. So instead of speaking one language, all of a sudden there was, I don't know, 10, 20, 50. I don't know. But people could not understand each other. So that's why it stopped. The Tower of Babel. Well now, if someone wanted to speak to another person, they couldn't understand. <clears throat> so whenever we had Pentecost, he gave them different tongues or the ability to speak different languages. And that was to promote the Holy Spirit and promote, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do something here while I'm talking and I really shouldn't. I apologize. I'll stop once I get it back. There we go. So anyhow, um, so, we, so we had a time where people could speak a different language. Like suddenly, I'm able to speak Chinese, Vietnamese, something like that. So I'm able to tell people about God. Where they before they weren't able to understand, I was trying to I would try to tell them and they couldn't. But because now that the Holy Spirit came on and gave me different tongues or languages to speak, that I was able to speak to other people. I'm not saying that I did that, I'm just saying that as an example. So <clears throat> they became messengers at that point because they were able to give the message of God to different speaking languages. Well, <clears throat> what else did you like about last week's message, Purple Monkey? Was there something else that you liked other than fire? Yeah. Oh yes, seeds. He liked to talk about the seeds because after the fire comes through a forest and destroys everything. See, there's new seeds that are underneath the, the, the burnt ashes. And that's what is new growth. The seeds become the new growth. And that's what we were talking about last week, is the new growth after maybe a... A terrible time. There's new seeds that grow. There's new growth. And that new growth is sometimes maybe even more beautiful than what was there before. So in our lives, it's almost like we have to die for that new self or that new person to grow. So I'm not saying that we physically die, but it's like in our hearts we change. We change to a different person. So we have that new growth inside of us. And 
when you see new growth in the springtime. Do you recognize we have now leaves on the trees? That's new growth. We recognize that. So in our own lives, whenever we see new growth in a person, it's very evident. Right, purple monkey? Yeah. So it's very evident whenever you have new growth within uh, someone. Now, <clears throat> I just want to leave you today with a song, and Purple Monkey is very excited about it. He picked it out today. Um, we talked about messengers, and he said, Hey, how about that group from uh, Monaghan, Ireland? They're called... We are messengers. Yeah, we are messengers. And they have this song called Power. And I'm going to leave that song with you today as we uh, close our lesson. Just listen to the song. Um, it's called Power. But in the song, it talks about what we just talked about. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us power. God gave us the Holy Spirit that we would have power within us. So I'm going to leave that with you today. Um, let's see if I can get you started. Okay, Purple Monkey, it's all you, buddy. You want to have the kids listen to your song? All right, well, I'll give the phone to you, and you can play the song for the kids. All right, how are we, do, how are we going to do this? We're going to set this alongside of you here? All right, so you want to go ahead and push that button there. We'll just get you going. All right. <clears throat> 